So, uh, this was a replacement talk that uh, I wrote today. <laughs> uh, so, first of all, uh, is there anyone here that knows what any cast is? Uh, BGP? Okay, so uh, I'll take my time there. <laughs> uh, the idea here is uh, that uh, everyone, like uh, every um, content provider, uh, content delivery uh, network, uh, has to have uh, fast access uh, for their clients. So uh, if uh, we are an American company and we want to serve uh, websites in Europe, uh, it would be bad for the customers in Europe to actually traverse uh, the Atlantic to, uh, to the States. So uh, the relative times would be bad. The idea is that uh, the way I, the IP protocol works uh, allows us to uh, set up one IP address that uh, could be visible on each continent or everywhere we have uh, announced it. So uh, this announcement is called uh, Anycast and it is done by BGP. And BGP is Border Gateway Protocol. Uh, it's used for the routers uh, of the internet. So let's see what we have. We have uh, the standard unicast communication, which is IP to IP directly. Then we have the broadcast, which is within, uh, the, mm, uh, within our network, within our prefix, we will broadcast this traffic to uh, everyone within our prefix. Uh, IPv6 doesn't have uh, broadcast, it has only multicasts. And then we have multicast, which is uh, a way for multiple machines on a single network uh, to subscribe for uh, packets to certain IP addresses. And finally, we have Anycast, which is a unicast communication, but with the closest uh, possible uh, IP address. And we'll see this. This here is private Bulgarian computer. <laughs> so uh, the unicast communication is, uh, is if we have one switch here, uh, both of these computers are connected to this switch, and they're connected through this switch directly. They have only one connection between them. Uh, broadcast means that when we are sending a packet to this switch here, the switch would see that this is a broadcast packet and it will broadcast it here. In the terms of uh, IP, however, uh, if this was a router, it would broadcast it to all the interfaces that have the same prefix here. And then we have multicast, where only some of the, these computers are actually uh, receiving the IP packets. So now let's see what Anycast is. This is Bulgaria, this is Sofia, Varner, Rose. We have three routers here. And we want to announce uh, the Qualfair's uh, one on one uh, DNS. And uh, here's what we'll do. This is uh, their autonomous system. This is the IP address. Uh, in BGP, uh, we can announce uh, the smallest prefixes that we can announce is uh, slash uh, 24, which means uh, 256 IP addresses are announced, all of them. So in order to announce this IP address one here, we actually have to announce the whole 256 IP addresses out of this router here. Uh, we see that we have done the same thing here in Rose, uh, where uh, we are announcing this IP address, but actually we are announcing the whole uh, slash 24 prefix. So now, when uh, a computer in Sofia tries to connect to uh, 11111, actually it connects to, the, uh, to this router here. And where uh, the computer here in Varna uh, will go through this router, the router will see that uh, uh, it can access uh, 101 on this route and uh, here via this router, the administrator here has to decide which route to prefer. Uh, usually this is uh, actually human work. Uh, somebody decides which link to be used, uh, the one to Russia or the one to, uh, to Sofia. And then uh, this computer then uh, doesn't know that it is connecting to Russia or Sofia. It simply tells its ISP to connect it to the closest one. And then the ISP actually uses the BGP routing table, and I'll show this in a bit, uh, to decide where to route that traffic to. So this computer is connecting to Russia instead of uh, Sofia. So 
think of it, if this is not Bulgaria, but this is the world map, this is a completely different thing. Now you can have this here uh, in New York, uh, this here in London, and this here in Sofia, and it's exactly the same situation. All ISPs are connected uh, here to this router. We have other ISPs connected here, to other ISPs connected, and these ISPs have to decide for themselves uh, which IP address uh, will be uh, accessed. So, uh, how this actually works? Uh, this is uh, output from uh, my router, uh, router here in Sofia. So uh, I can access uh, Cloudflare 101 slash 24 via this, uh, via this uh, autonomous system. I'll explain what uh, autonomous system uh, is in a bit. So uh, I have connection to this router, this router, this router, and this router. And from all of these routers, I have a BGP path. BGP path is uh, uh, a simple array of uh, autonomous systems, which I count, and this is the uh, short, and usually BGP uses the shortest path to connect to a certain uh, IP address. So in, the, in my case here, I have two equal paths. On this router, 12 here, and on uh, this router, 15 here, I have uh, BGP paths that are uh, free autonomous systems well. So this means that I have only three routers to go through, which is nice. Uh, I also have, uh, if these two are dead, I would also have, uh, uh, can reach this autonomous system by here and here. Uh, sorry, this is also free, so this means that I have three equal uh, routes here. Now I have to decide uh, which uh, route I would take. Uh, obviously, I have taken cogent there, but uh, obvious because this is the first route. <laughs> uh, why I have taken this? Uh, I can, as a, an administrator on this router, I can decide by uh, putting local preference that I prefer this route here, or I can leave it for the BGP router, for the BGP protocol to decide for itself. So uh, for the BGP protocol, it would be, uh, if this dies, it would, complete, uh, it will go directly to the other one. If this dies, it will go directly to this one. If this dies, it will go to the longest one. So it, every time it would try to uh, get a route with the same path or lower path, or every time you get a, a new connection, a uh, new BGP uh, router connected to you that has a uh, uh, smaller path to this destination, BGP will, would prefer this unless you have put some local preference there. So what is the autonomous system? The autonomous system, you may look at it as a, a very simple uh, combination of uh, routes. Uh, a single route would be a uh, slash 24 prefix, uh, for example, or a uh, slash 22 prefix. And uh, a combination of, uh, for example, four routes uh, may be uh, announced to the internet via this uh, name of table. That is, all these four routes are named as autonomous system uh, 13, 30, 13, 33, uh, 5. So, uh, the idea is that uh, BGP obviously is a protocol, computer protocol, so uh, names there do not apply very easily. So they're using uh, numbers. Uh, BGP has uh, two versions that, uh, of uh, the autonomous systems, 16-bit uh, and 32-bit. This means that for the 16-bit, uh, we have uh, 0 to uh, 65,535. Uh, and uh, for the 32-bit, we have a large number. <laughs> so uh, you need autonomous system in order to communicate with another BGP uh, speaker. So you have to have a router, BGP router, uh, which can be a very simple uh, software on Linux, like uh, Quagga, Bird, Exa BGP, or Open BGPD. Uh, if you are interested in BGP, we are organizing uh, a few BGP workshops uh, in Infop two or three times a year. So you have multiple prefixes, single autonomous system. What you do is you get this autonomous system, and from it you are telling the world that uh, you are uh, announcing this prefix to the world. If you are announcing this from Sofia, every traffic for this IP address would go through uh, this autonomous system and uh, would, go, would go first to Sofia because uh, in Sofia we see the uh, autonomous system and then 
in the autonomous system we will find the route and there we will find the machine. Uh, this is when you are doing a simple unicast routing. When you are doing any cast, you simply announce the same autonomous system with the same prefix somewhere else in the states. So, for example, what's happening here is... Sorry. <laughs> uh, what's happening here is that uh, I'm announcing in Sofia, and everyone that is uh, by BGP path close to Sofia will connect to the IP addresses in Sofia. Everyone that is close to the states will connect to the states. The problem with this thing is that uh, BGP is a routing protocol. This means that it is used to exchange routes and change of routes over the internet. And the internet is constantly changing. This means that uh, if an upstream in Sofia, and let's say that is a huge upstream that has hundreds of gigabits per second to Sofia, dies because uh, some tractor came along. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, this dies, and all the prefixes that were announced from Sofia, now nobody around would see them. And they would get another notification from New York that uh, this prefix is announced from the same autonomous system, but now this autonomous system is reachable in New York. And all the routers, since they had both uh, routes, they had the same thing as you can see it here. They have. Uh, announcement of this autonomous system from two or more places, they would simply switch to the next place directly. So uh, you're, the problem here is that you're not in control of the internet. You're in control of uh, what you announced to the internet. So you have to understand a little bit better BGP in order to uh, work with any cast. But, uh, you can actually make uh, your own uh, Anycast network with uh, like 10 nodes for around $500 a, a year. <laughs> uh, I'll share with you a presentation after that. So uh, why would you actually want to build an Anycast network? First, uh, you may want to uh, build your own CDN. Uh, my previous talk, you found that uh, if you don't control your CDN, it's a bit of a problem with security. So if you want to build your own CDN, maybe that's uh, a solution for you. Uh, if you want, if you have customers all over the globe, you actually need to have a uh, presence close to them in order for your site to load faster there. So any cast would help there. Uh, also, uh, reducing attack surface. What does this mean? Uh, when you have a DDoS, when you have a DOS, it's pretty simple. You have one IP address attacking your server. It's pretty simple. You simply know no route uh, uh, the source, and you don't care about the traffic from there. Obviously, it's attacking you. But when you have DDoS, what's happening is that you have multiple different IP addresses directly hitting your server. And when you have one server, all this traffic is reaching there. But now, with Anycast, you may have multiple servers, like 10 different locations. This means that uh, now you split the traffic between these 10 different locations because the IP protocol, the router through, the, uh, through which the IP has to go through, uh, will route the traffic to these 10 different servers. Obviously, if you still have the majority of the attack uh, next to one of the servers, uh, it will be done. But uh, you at least are uh, spreading the uh, attack across all of your servers. Uh, this is actually how uh, most of the big uh, companies are fighting with uh, DDoS. They don't care about DDoS. They simply handle it. <laughs> they can handle hundreds of gigabits per second. Their traffic, they consider it as a normal traffic. I have friends that are running porn sites which have hundreds of gigabits of normal traffic and they don't care about a hundred gigabit attack. Simply they handle the attack. What about the GitHub DDoS attack? What about the GitHub DDoS attack? Uh, not every infrastructure is so distributed as uh, the uh, biggest class. So uh, yes, uh, GitHub was affected, but it wasn't uh, globally affected. So where uh, they had too many uh, attack nodes reaching their servers, obviously that part of their network was down. But for example, for me, it wasn't down. <laughs> I didn't have a problem, although on IRC, I was uh, talking with friends that couldn't connect to GitHub. <laughs> So it depends. 
the budget. One option is, uh, do your wife has to know about this? <laughs> this is the budget limit. Uh, maybe around a, a thousand dollars is a max. And then uh, you have a business uh, anycast where you actually want to buy the stuff that you want to do uh, to use for anycast. So again, if you want to do it just for fun, uh, you can do it in around uh, 500, 600 dollars. Uh, if you want to do it very professionally, you would have to pay for this. So what's the point? How will we do this? First, we obviously need IP addresses. You can get free IPv6 addresses, although most of you, if you don't have a phone, smartphone, you don't have an IPv6 address also. <laughs> All smartphones are actually, by default, preferring IPv6, so that's not a problem. If you want just to play with it, IPv6 is the way, uh, is the way to go. So you have to get IP addresses. Then you have to uh, find points of presence POPs, points of presence, which are actually data centers where you would uh, buy a dedicated co-location or uh, VM you know, container stuff, where you would run uh, your service and announce your networks. Uh, you need autonomous system because you want to announce these IP addresses that you get. But uh, this is the way you get it. first IP addresses, then the POPs, and then autonomous systems. You would understand why. Then, after you get the IP addresses and uh, you have VMs, for example, or uh, dedicated servers, uh, then you get uh, the BGP sessions. Uh, this is, you need to connect your BGP, uh, your VM to the BGP router of your data center, of your provider. Uh, the nice thing is that if you're in a good co-location or dedicated uh, um, data center, uh, you would actually be able to buy even uh, direct connectivity to internet transport providers like Entity, uh, uh, Level 3, Cogent, uh, Hurricane. You can directly peer with those guys and uh, do not use uh, the network of the provider uh, that you have in the data center. Uh, after you set up the BGP sessions with uh, the providers, you announce your prefix and then you set up some services on this. So. Uh, how we can get IP addresses? There are two ways. You may become a local internet registry or you can get sponsored by local internet registry. What is earlier? So IP addresses are uh, separated in the world uh, across uh, a few regions. And this is a map of the regions of the regional internet registries. And uh, in, uh, if you have a company or you live in uh, the States or Canada, you have to go to Ireland. Uh, if you live in uh, Europe or a company uh, in Europe, you have to go to Arrive and uh, most of Asia. Again, right. Then we have Asia, uh, Oceania, and uh, Australia with uh, APNIC. And then we have uh, AFRINIC and WACNIC. You, they have different sites, different, different policies. You have to, if you go to uh, the railway, you actually have to register there as a person or a company. And you have to pay annual fee for management of the services that they provide. They actually give you a number with a slash on it. <laughs> and you pay for this. <laughs> so they give you the IP addresses. And uh, that's it. Uh, with, uh, I would go with uh, Arrive because we are here in Europe and obviously this is the closest thing uh, for us. And explain, I have seven layers myself, so uh, I'll explain the procedure here. Uh, you go to the website, register as a layer, prepare all the company documents. This means the incorporation documents, uh, the uh, copy of the, um, of the passport of uh, the owner and stuff like this, everything that uh, is required by Arrive. Send these uh, as uh, scanned documents on uh, their registration form. Wait a few days, maybe two days. They will contact you by phone and then uh, by email. Uh, when they verify you, uh, they will send you a contract by DHL. Uh, two days later, you get the contract. You sign that contract or turn the contract. Four days later, uh, four to five days, uh, they uh, accept the contract and you have to pay. After the payment, one to two days later, uh, you get uh, your registered and uh, you get your account and you can do everything else. This is around two weeks of work. Uh, after that, you have to uh, request, uh, okay, so uh, in 
All right, You're, we are currently paying 2,000 euro per year. Uh, it's actually 1,400 uh, euros uh, per year right now because they are giving us back money that we have gave them uh, previous years. I don't know. So 1,400 for right. Uh, Lachnik, Kafernik, and Tapnik are mm, considerably slower. Like Lachnik, it took me a month and a half to set up the uh, uh, they were there. Uh, Aaron uh, was again within two weeks. Uh, I was finished there. Uh, Afrinik and Tapnik, they are slow to respond even. <laughs> Sometimes you may wait for a week just to uh, respond uh, to an email request. <laughs> so uh, it's a problem. All the uh, regional uh, internet registries doesn't have IP addresses. So the the only thing that you would get from them is a slash twenty two prefix for this. 400,000 euros, uh, for 1,400 euros. Uh, so the request procedure is very simple. You uh, for IP, you go to the website, you uh, fill in the form, you say that you want uh, initial prefix. That's this is very important. You want initial prefix, and they will give you uh, a slash 22 prefix, uh, which is uh, 2,000 IPs, uh, 1,000. No. One two thousand IPs. After that, uh, again, you go to the website, request the autonomous system. You get the uh, the autonomous system. But for for the autonomous system, you have to fill in in the forms that uh, you need to that you would pair this autonomous system with another autonomous system, and they require two. This means that at that uh, at that point in time, you already have to have two data centers and to know their uh, two autonomous systems that you can fill in, in this uh, uh, form. You can order the autonomous system without uh, uh, appearing uh, autonomous systems, but uh, they will mm, have back and forth emails with you <coughs> for a week or two before they give you the autonomous system. If you explain that you are going to use this for any cast, they will be compo uh, it would be easy, but again, a week more. After you get the autonomous system, uh, after you request the autonomous system again, within a week uh, you'll get the autonomous system and that's it. Uh, the sponsor in Clearway, which is the cheapest way, uh, you find uh, Lear like me and say, okay, uh, I really like you, would you uh, register uh, an autonomous system for me? And uh, also, uh, would you buy or lease IP addresses for me? Since uh, I'm earlier, I have my own IP addresses, I may lease my IP addresses to you, or uh, I may buy IP addresses for you uh, on your name, uh, or uh, I can lease IP addresses on your name. So uh, every IP address in the internet has to have an owner uh, inside the uh, regi regional uh, internet registries. And then it has to have an owner uh, on some of the, on any of the uh, local uh, internet registries. So this is why you need the sponsoring clear. So but this is easy. Uh, you can find uh, multiple sponsoring clears. Uh, it's not a big problem. And you can also uh, actually ask the data center where you're going to uh, build your points of presence to uh, act as a sponsoring clear in, on your behalf. Choosing your points of presence. This is maybe the most important thing uh, when you're building any cast. Uh, there are actually two ways there. You either already have a points of presence that you want to any cast in, or you're building entirely new infrastructure. When you're building entirely new infrastructure, uh, you have to take into account where your customers are coming from. Uh, I mean, go to Google Analytics and see from which countries you have the most access to your websites. And then, uh, based on this data, uh, find a data center provider in this country, uh, on all of these countries, or the top 10 of these countries, and uh, build uh, order, VM, dedicated server, or whatever. So after that, uh, in these data centers, uh, what you're searching for in a data center is first, connectivity, and second, uh, uh, support, third, is that they offer a BGP. Without the BGP, no any cast. Uh, most of the data centers do not uh, advertise that they can give you uh, BGP, so 
go on chat, uh, send emails, ask them, do they support, would they allow you to BGP peer with them? If they do that, it's fine for you. Most of them would agree, some would not. Uh, and uh, the most important uh, part here is try to keep the number of suppliers, the number of data centers uh, small, which means that uh, there are companies that have multiple data centers uh, across the world, and uh, if you find a suitable, suitable uh, data center provider, uh, it would be nice, nicer if you have uh, only two or three companies to work with instead of uh, for each point of presence different company. Uh, simply because uh, first you become bigger client for uh, the, num uh, the smaller number of companies and second uh, you don't deal with different interfaces for each different uh, point of presence. So the BGP setup afterwards, uh, it's uh, pretty s uh, standard. You create the VMs or dedicated servers, then you install uh, BGP software there. Uh, most people that are used to Cisco are preferring Quagga. Uh, you need to know that Quagga is the most memory hungry. So currently in order to keep the whole BGP routing table, which is around 600,000 routes, uh, it requires around two, three gigabytes of RAM which is a bit of a problem. BERT uh, is uh, very inexpensive in, in terms of RAM. Uh, 12 times the uh, full BGP ta uh, table is around 800 megabytes. <laughs> so compared with Quagga, it's a uh, different beast. Uh, I haven't worked with OpenBGPD and TexaBGPD, but uh, on the BGP workshops, uh, I have seen people working with them. Obviously, it worked nice. So you have to prepare the software. After that, you have to prepare your announcements. What is this? When you are setting up your BGP, you have to create filters. This is the most important part. You need to announce to the internet only your prefixes. You don't want to try to announce, for example, uh, 111 uh, slash, uh, dot zero slash 24, or you don't want to announce uh, uh, YouTube IP addresses, because all those, uh, this traffic will go to you. Obviously, the company above you would have filters, but uh, just to be good internet citizens, have filters on your end also. Uh, filter, so you're announcing only your uh, networks, only your prefixes, so filter to them. Also, you have to prepare, you have to prepare to connect with your uh, BGP peers. So you need to collect data from your data centers. What's the IP address of uh, the server, the router that I'm going to connect to? What's the autonomous system uh, that you would be using on that end? And this is my autonomous system that you should, connect, uh, you should configure on your end for me. And final part is uh, you have uh, rented or bought IP addresses then on, in your uh, rear, uh, regular internet registry, you have to create a route object for the database, IP database. So within uh, uh, RIPE, this is a very uh, simple uh, interface where you simply say, this is my prefix, and it can be announced by my autonomous system, which is this number, and that's it. It's pretty straightforward, but you have to create this. When you're doing uh, uh, any cast, this is why you need to have uh, one uh, autonomous system in order to keep uh, this uh, data in the database to a single route with single autonomous system. Uh, after that, uh, after you have set up everything, announce one of the slash 24s that you already have and uh, announce it only from one place. Ping it. You see that it, you can connect to uh, these IPs. Not only the first IP, but ping at least 10 or uh, 15 of these IP addresses. Just to check that you have uh, made everything work correctly on your side. If it works on one data center, okay, then announce it from another, the same prefix, announce it from one other uh, data center. Now we have two data centers. Verify that it works from both data centers. How you would do that, I'll explain in a bit. And after that is working, announce it to the whole world from all of your locations. Uh, 
in some cases, uh, some of your data centers ISPs would, uh, would require you to uh, give them the first or the last IP address of your prefix in order to route, uh, to route it to your VM or uh, dedicated server. Uh, in order to do this, uh, you need to uh, have additional prefix, the slash 32 prefix to them, uh, so you don't lose connectivity when you're using only this uh, IP address. Uh, when you're setting up web servers, uh, I advise you to add a location header uh, so you can know when you're uh, accessing a server that uh, it ha you have connected to the correct server. You can also use uh, tools like RIPE Atlas, uh, RIPE Stats, and uh, uh, KCD and ping to uh, ping from different locations or use the... Uh, I forgot the name of two tools from uh, IP uh, providers. Uh, there would be a lot of issues with BGP. Uh, for example, traffic from North America would go to Brazil instead of North America, simply because routers see the route closer to uh, to North America from uh, Brazil. Uh, you can fix this by adding prepends. What you saw on uh, the BGP table was that the known system of uh, uh, Cloudflare was announced two times, one, one after another. This is called prepending. This means that uh, uh, in this case, Cloudflare told the router before uh, my router that uh, they want to have longer BGP path, and it would be at least two uh, autonomous systems. Uh, you can play with this a lot uh, in order to make uh, the configuration. This is maybe the hardest part here. Uh, you have to monitor uh, your routes because flapping BGP means that uh, uh, some of the routers in the internet would simply, if you constantly dropping the prefix and announcing it again, uh, they have uh, protections from uh, frequently uh, dropping and announcing the same prefix and they may block this prefix for a certain time, may, uh, for example, a day or two, which is a big, uh, big problem. Uh, my advice would be uh, connect all of your VMs dedicated server in one single mesh VPN network and access those uh, via this uh, mesh VPN network. And I'm saying mesh because I really need you to understand sometimes you may not be able to connect to Brazil, but you may connect to Brazil through the states. If you have a mesh VPN, you don't care what the routing problem is. You simply know that you can connect to the local IP at the uh, point of presence. Uh, if possible, try to order VMs and dedicated servers with uh, multiple network interfaces uh, so you can have redundant network, one for the BGP and one that you can connect to. Uh, which services are best for uh, any cast, DNS and NTP obviously, and uh, if you're good with the BGP uh, prepending, uh, you can actually do uh, web content delivery, which is uh, what uh, all the content delivery networks are uh, doing. You need to understand that uh, every TCP-based service and connection-based service cannot work with any cast. So HTTP, uh, HTTP 1 and 2, uh, simply because the connections are short-lived, this, uh, this is why they can be any cast, but most of the time they can't. And I finished. <laughs>